Hello and welcome to the Extended Greg YouTube channel. I'm Greg and on today's show we're going to be talking about the basics of audio consoles. So let's get right into it. We're about to get extended. So audio consoles are used for a variety of reasons, mainly for production purposes. So you'll often see them used on film sets, you'll see them used in television production, you'll see them used for church music uh, or plays, things of that nature. But anytime that you see uh, various audio sources that need to be combined together down to a single output to run to speakers or to a recorder, you'll often see mixers in use. So let's just hop right into it. What I have right here is this is just a Behringer 1202 audio console. So I chose this just because it's very small and uh, all of the inputs and outputs are on the top, uh, which makes it a little bit easier to demonstrate. I do have a larger one as well that, you know, I'll bring out in a future video. But for today, this is just going to be able to convey that purpose, uh, you know, so we know what's going on. So. At the top here, we're going to start with going vertically, okay? So the input channels themselves come in vertically into the console, and then they go out horizontally. So it's set up like a grid. So on our input channels, we have our mic input, which in this case is an XLR connector. So this would connect up to a regular microphone, things of that nature. We then have a quarter inch input, and what this can be used for is for higher signal levels than the mic, or it can be used for instrument in some cases, which is a lower level signal, but still it's a quarter inch connector that would fit right there. Below that we have the gain adjustment. So this is used so you can increase the amount of amplification uh, as soon as the signal comes into the board. Uh, you can increase the amplification for the rest of the chain. And that affects things like uh, curves, things of that nature, because audio is a logarithmic scale so you want to make sure that you're starting with what is called unity level, okay? Which means that it's at a certain level where it's optimal for all the processes in the board and for the output. Going down from there, this particular console has something unusual, which only some consoles have, but this particular one does, which is a compression function. And what that will do is it will actually control some of the dynamics associated with that input signal. So if your input signal gets a little bit too loud, instead of clipping uh, throughout the rest of the channel and potentially causing distortion or just jumping way out of line and, you know, <laughs> blowing up everybody's ears, it will actually constrain that volume of that particular source. So it's a little bit easier to mix. So that's the compression function on this board. And then what you'll typically have on boards of this size are three EQ levels. And EQ stands for equalizer. And an equalizer is actually used to be able to adjust certain frequencies to be able to raise them or to lower them. And that's useful if you have a, like a particular high pitched sound that you want to cut down on in a uh, signal or if you want to raise the bass of music, for example, etc. This is how you would be able to do that. And then there's three, there's high, which is 12 kilohertz on this one, mid, which is about two and a half kilohertz, and low, which in this case is about 80, 80 hertz, which is very low. And the audible spectrum for the human ear is typically 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. So this covers a nice broad sample of everything that would be within that. And then below that, we have what is the low cut. If you want to get rid of, for example, microphone rumble from somebody actually holding a microphone uh, and you didn't want that to actually come through in your mix, you would hit this button and that would get rid of a lot of it. Um, but for certain examples, like if you had a bass guitar going into your mix, you wouldn't really want to be applying that because it's not going to have that rumble. You're going to actually want that rumble. Otherwise, you're going to be cutting off part of the notes that they're trying to play. And then the next thing down is an FX bus, okay? And it calls it effects, but really it's an aux bus, as it would be seen on other, on other uh, mixers. And that does, in fact, go to some internal effects that are available for this mixer, but we'll get into that in a second. So then below that on this channel input, we have the pan knob. So we'll cover, <laughs> in a second, we'll talk about more about the output bus, but just a broad overview. There's actually two 
output buses. And we're saying a bus, we're talking about a pair of electrical rails that we can add the, that we can output the audio to. Okay, so it's, it's actual physical wire inside of the console that allows us to be able to send that audio to that place and then it will actually appear on the output of the console itself. So we can ch send it to either the left output bus or the right or both or any mix in between. So we have the ability to be able to set up stereo, right? Because that is stereo is left and right. You have two ears, so it has two outputs and that's what this is for. So you can actually use that to be able to, you know, split it out entirely. So if you turn it all the way to the left, you can split certain sources and have different feeds going to different places, or you can actually just kind of favor it. You know, if you have an instrument, for example, that appears on a stage on the left and you had stereo speakers, you could favor it to the left and give a stereo image to your audience that is indicative of what they're seeing on the stage. And then below that, finally, we have our level control for the main bus, right? So this controls the left and right pan adjustment, so it controls which bus we're going to. But then we have our level adjustment, which actually chooses how much volume out of that that we're going to want to send to our main output. And if you look right here, we have a zero indicated um, as we see it, and that's the where you want to target with setting your gain. So you would set this to zero, you would make sure your EQ is in line. If your pan was needed to be, you know, if you wanted it to come out both of your output buses, you would set your pan to center, turn your compression off, and then adjust your gain with this at zero. So that way, when you had your output, you know, set up, or if you had it soloed, as it's called, which is just pretty much choosing this individual channel, which is not available on this particular mixer, uh, that you would try and set it so the normal volume for that input would be at zero. So you'd see the green light lighting up consistently, but the 6 dB, uh, plus 6 dB light, in this particular case, uh, lighting up infrequently, and the 20 dB, neg 20 dB light uh, pretty much lighting solid. So that's what you would use the gain adjustment for, and that's how you would set that particular level. And then once that's done, you can actually set it so you get if the volume goes a little bit more, you know, you would turn it so you would see your compressor light go on in terms of setting your compression. And then you would go a little bit higher so that way it wasn't lit when it was normally at zero. But if it started to go above that, this would kind of constrain that down to being at your zero point. So you're keeping a consistent level throughout the rest of the chain. Then if you needed to actually adjust any of your EQ settings, anything of that nature, you would go through and you would adjust your EQ uh, so that way you would, you know, add your high end. Let's say you want it to uh, sound brighter, you would add a little bit of high end to it. Um, or if it sounded very muddy, you would pull a little bit of mid out of it, you know. Or if it sounded like it was a weak signal, it was too bright, you know, so to where it sounded thin, you would add some low end to it. Now, something to keep in mind with EQ is that you cannot actually add signals and frequencies that are on are not already there. It can only enhance what's already in the signal. It cannot create signal itself. So definitely something to keep in mind. And then for our effects bus, uh, let's start to talk about outputs. So our effects bus, bus here in red actually goes to our effects processor inside of this console. And sometimes this is outboard, sometimes this is inboard. Uh, this is a cheaper console, so at the end of the day, it tends to be inboard and it usually, usually only has one. But as you get into like larger shows, things of that nature, there'll either be multiple of these integrated inside the console, or you'll have more than one outboard uh, in a rack unit somewhere uh, adjacent to the console. So what this will do is allow us to add reverb, delay, uh, modulation, multi-effects, things of that nature, uh, where we can select it, and then we can choose to send a little bit of the signal. So for example, if we wanted to give it more of a presence, we want to make it seem like it was more three-dimensional sound, right? So it was echoing off of a place uh, inside of the room and it had more body to the sound itself. We would want to add a little bit of reverb to that to be able to make it so there's more sustain. 
So it just, it brings out, especially vocals for music, things of that nature. Uh, you know, you'd want to actually add that artificially, especially if you're going to like do a recording. Otherwise it will sound very, very flat. It will sound like they're just singing into mics. There's no real uh, life to it, you know? So that's where that's useful, but you don't send your entire signal through there. You'd only send a little bit and then that will apply the effect and then you'll have this which is the fx to main knob and this will actually send that fx signal and mix it in with the original audio in the main mix so your signals are coming in you're splitting off a little bit going to the effects you're splitting off most of it and going to the main and then you mix them back together at the end to create your overall output mix and it's the same thing as you go through the individual channels to be able to create your mix. So it's just, it's pretty much repetition through a similar process. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm covering this in very broad strokes, but that's kind of the overview of how you would actually create that mix. And then on the output side, usually you want to leave that at zero, you know, so that way you have a little bit of play to go up if it's everything, everything as a whole is way too soft or if everything is way too loud you can bring that down a little bit because then you can kind of reach your zero so an example of where that would be applicable is if you have a band who during rehearsals doesn't have as much energy as they do during a performance you could set it at zero during the rehearsal but then when it actually came time to do the performance they could start clipping and causing problems so we would want to bring that down a little bit so that way they're not now granted there is a light next to the pan here that we didn't talk about, which is the clip LED, which means that there's distortion uh, in the channel because it's exceeding its operational volume. You know, it's exceeding the range that the signal can exist in within the particular console. And for that, you'd have to adjust down the gain in order to get that to stop illuminating. But if you were clipping over here on the output bus, that's where you would adjust your output uh, master, as it's called, the main mix fader in order to be able to uh, get that under control. So that would then output through here, which are the quarter inch output buses. We do have an output also for the FX send if we wanted to send that to another piece of equipment. But then we have something very important here, right? Which is our headphone output. So, right, we have our main outputs, our left and right. We have our FX send, which is if we wanted to do something externally, and then we have our headphone output. And I just have a quarter inch uh, TRS adapter to uh, 3.5 millimeter, 3.5 millimeter eighth inch. That's pretty much a headphone at adapter. That way you could plug in a set of headphones to be able to listen to things uh, without having it be uh, through the front of house. Uh, and then. In addition to that, there's a control room output, which is something you can use in lieu of headphones. You can actually have speakers for your control room. Uh, there's some RCA inputs and outputs, which allow you, for example, uh, the output would allow you to go to a tape recorder or some kind of MP3 recorder uh, to be able to record what you're doing. And then here we have stereo line inputs, because generally what they do with these is they call it 1202, for example, which stands for 12 inputs, two outputs, but we see there's only four inputs here, but then there's eight of them that are in stereo pairs. Okay, so if you had, for example, a piano that output as, as being a, a quarter inch uh, stereo connection, you can actually use that to plug into here, and this will control both the stereo uh, left and right channels separately. So it's kind of two channels in one, if you will, opposed to this, where it's designed for a microphone which is a single channel and it splits it out to dual channels. So on our future videos we're going to be getting into a little bit more of the details and showing a demonstration of exactly what the you know how this operates and, and showing some different uh, conditions and things like that as well as getting into some of the more advanced functions. So be sure to hit that like and subscribe button and hit that notification bell. It really helps me out a lot. Uh, that way you know the next time we're getting extended. So until then take care.